Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Professor Hall and today we are talking about comma use. This is the first of three videos I'm going to have about commas. So today we are going to review the three types of uses for commas that we have already talked about. And then next time we're going to go into three other uses for commas. And then in the third video, we'll look at some paragraphs, some authentic materials, and we'll see how commas are used in real life. The only difference with this video, unless I find some mistakes, <laughs> in, unless I find some mistakes in the examples, we're not so much going to look at what not to do. Um, I find when talking about commas, if I show you like here's the error, it might be a little bit confusing. So we're going to talk about what to do instead, and then you will have the chance to practice um, as you have with the other grammar errors that we've looked at and the punctuation errors. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, and I will probably need to increase my font <laughs> before I start. There we go. Okay, so our first use for commas is um, to separate items in a list. So we have talked about that before. That basically though comes out in two different ways. Um, so let's do an example. Let's look at somebody who is doing a number of different things all at the same time. Trudy runs track, plays tennis, and swims. Okay, so we have our comma here after running track. We have our comma here after tennis before the and. So here, should add a list of three or more items. Trudy runs plat track, comma, plays tennis, comma, and swims. This little comma right here, right before the and, is called an Oxford comma. Um, I recommend that you use this kind of comma um, because typically there's another use for comma later um, and that also involves the word and. So it's also just helps to clarify things. Some people use it and some people don't. I recommend doing it, but I guess the choice is up to you if you really don't want to have it in there. I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't. Let's look at another example. Um, let's have more than three things this time. Jonathan bought eggs, milk, butter, bread, ice cream, cookies, candy, and cake at the store. Okay, so where do we have our commas? We have them after every item in this series. Eggs, I'll just try to highlight just the comma, there we go. Milk, butter, bread, ice cream, I hope Jonathan's having a party, cookies, candy comma and and then we have the and okay now if you have two or more items if you I'm sorry if you only have two items you don't do this so here is Trudy runs track and plays tennis no commas Jonathan picked up eggs and milk at the store. No commas there either because this is only for a list of three or more items. So that's how that looks. Okay, I actually lied. I'm giving you guys four rules today. Not, oh, sorry, four rules, not three. Okay, so our second rule is this. Um, it's kind of similar to the first and I hope it's not too confusing, but when you have two or more adjectives describing a noun, you use a comma to separate those items. In this case, adjectives. 
well, what the heck does that actually mean, Professor Hall? That's probably what you're asking yourselves right now. So here is our first example. Um, girl with long, dark, straight hair sat alone in the restaurant. If I could type correctly, that would be good. Okay, so long, dark, and straight are our adjectives. They all are describing this word hair. So if you say, what type of hair did she have? Well, the answer is that the describing words that we see are long, dark, and straight. Okay, now a couple things, comma after long, comma after dark, no comma after straight. It's right before the word hair, so we don't wanna separate. It's just that these, if they didn't have a comma, would kind of be jumbled together, right? So we need a comma, if you remember, is a brief pause. That's what it does. Um, and a period is a full stop. We don't want periods here. The long period, dark period, straight period hair, right? Wouldn't make any sense. But long, dark, straight with a little bit of space in between. So let's give another example. Example. I wanted to buy a new flashy car. Now here you notice two or more in the case of adjectives, it's not just three, right? So what kind of car do I want? I really don't want a new flashy car. I think that those just get you pulled over, but um, new flashy. These are our adjectives. So I'm gonna put those in green and they have one comma between them. Now you might see a sentence, you might see a sentence where um, the adjectives have an and separating them. So if I said, I want to buy a new car that is, let's change that, a car that is new and flashy, right? But that you notice that the placement here is a little bit different. So give you one more example. The book smelled like old autumn leaves. Okay. Here we have two adjectives describing the leaves, right? So old, green, autumn, and green, and a comma between them. So both of these uses are pretty similar, right? If we go back up here, we have things separated, a list of three or more items, usually combined with and, sometimes you'll have an or in there, um, but Trudy, runs track, comma, plays tennis, comma, and sw swims, um, all of those things that Jonathan bought. And here, it's kind of the same idea. When we have two or more adjectives describing a noun, there are commas in between to separate those items out. So what is another thing that we talked about before in our other grammar lectures? Three, use, a comma before a fanboy's injunction when combining two sentences. Sorry guys, my fingers are typing all over the place here. So we talked about this before, um, a simple sentence and then a comma and then a fanboys, I call them that, but the real name for them is coordinating. Coordinating meaning that they're bringing two things together. A simple sentence plus a comma plus a fanboys conjunction plus another simple sentence 
is a compound sentence. You can also have a compound complex that would be a little bit different. Um, I don't want to get into that too much right at the moment, but just remember that when you're doing one of these conjunction words, these fanboy conjunction words, I'll put them in pink, um, that you need the comma first. So a lot of times this is where I'll see people making mistakes. They'll put a word in like, but, or, and, so, and they'll forget to have the comma. So what does this look like? Um, let's give a few examples. I love reading, but I rarely have time for it anymore. Okay. I love reading. Complete thought, simple sentence. I rarely have time for it anymore. Complete thought, simple sentence. And we are combining them. We are coordinating them. We are um, joining them together with a comma and then our conjunction word. Let's look at another example. Dave has two dates. And he may have a third in the same day. Dave, you dirty dog. All right, Dave has two dates is one sentence. He may have a third in the same day is one sentence. And they are combined here by a comma and then the conjunction. So comma first and then the conjunction. One more. I may go to Florida for vacation or I may stay home. Probably the second one. So I may go to Florida on the, for vacation. I may stay home. Each of those are complete thoughts and they're joined together by this comma and this conjunction. Okay, now if you found this really confusing, what I would like you to do is go back into my lectures on sentence structures and watch the video about compound sentences because I talk a lot more about how to create compound sentences, how to combine things. Okay, so that's three and now we are on to our last one, number four. Now we talked about this a couple of different times, but I want to do a tiny bit of review. And this one I am going to title, use a comma after a dependent clause. So I'm going to review before I give you guys examples. Review. A dependent clause, it has a subject and verb, but, oh, guess what? I'm doing a compound sentence. <laughs> Good for me. But, so it has a subject and verb, but it also has a subordinating conjunction, which some people call dependent marker word, which creates an unanswered question. As a result, it cannot stand on its own as an independent thought. So what do we do instead? Well, if you remember from my lectures before, we can combine a dependent clause with an independent clause. We can also combine it by adding it to um, another type of sentence. So if we have, let's say, we could add the dependent clause to a compound sentence. And that would give us, if you remember, now it becomes a compound complex. But 
Um, I don't want to get too much into that. <laughs> but again, if, if that's confusing, you can go back and watch that video. So what does this look like? Well, when we do this combination, right, when we do the combining, we can do it in one of two ways. So our first way, mark it with an A, if the dependent clause comes first, it is followed by a comma. So let's give an example. Harriet, oops, sorry, the dependent clause is coming first. Because Harriet was late, her boyfriend dumped her. Poor Harriet. So, her boyfriend dumped her, or if, if I were writing this as a separate sentence, Harriet's boyfriend dumped her, that would be a complete thought. Because Harriet was late, here we have that dependent marker word. Okay? Starts off our dependent clause, and then we end the dependent clause with a comma. So it's followed by the comma, and then we have the independent. Let's take a look at another example. After I came back from China, I discovered that I had lost my appetite for bad Chinese food and I started cooking at home. Okay. So here is a compound sentence, right? Independent clause. I discovered that I had lost my appetite for chi bad Chinese food, comma, and I started cooking at home. So this dependent clause, we have our dependent marker word after, and I came back from China, and then our comma here. So these are properly combined. We have now made a compound complex sentence. After I came back from China, comma, I discovered that I had lost my appetite for bad Chinese food, comma, and I started cooking back at home. Now, if you want me to break that down a little bit more, I can. I'm thinking maybe some people might be confused. So I is our subject, came back is our verb. Um, we actually have a couple different clauses in here that I didn't intend on, but I'll, I'll just highlight this for our purposes right now. I is our subject discovered is our verb, comma, and I, again, subject, um, started cooking would be our complete verb. There we go. So you can see each one of these has a subject and verb. And they need to be combined in the correct way with comma here, and then the other comma before the end. Okay, if our dependent clause, I actually, I feel like I wanna do one more. I feel like people might be confused. If you're not, you can skip ahead about 20 seconds, but if you are, it's okay. Until Anne brought the cows into the barn, Matthew refused to give her the wages she earned on the farm. Okay, <laughs> just to make that sentence make a little sense. All right, so we have until here. And as our subject, broad as our verb, it starts with a subordinating conjunction, a dependent marker word. Then we have our, ne our next subject here. So we have a comma after that dependent clause. And then Matthew refused is our independent clause and they're now properly combined. Now, if you do this the other way, if the dependent clause comes second or third, <laughs> you do not need 
a comma before it. So let's take that last example and I'm going to flip it around. Matthew refused, and let's just make this make sense, to give Anne the wages she earned on the farm until she brought the cows into the barn. Now you'll notice we have until and that starts off our dependent clause right there but there's no comma before now you might be asking me professor hall why is there no comma before that i don't know <laughs> is my answer sometimes with english the rules um english is a is a weird combination of like german french latin greek kind of all mixed into one um, some like Germanic tribal languages, um, a little bit of early French and, and some other things kind of got mixed in there. Um, so sometimes the rules don't make as much sense as they do in other languages. And I think that's why people often get frustrated with it. But if you can learn the rules, once you get used to practicing them and seeing them in authentic materials, I think that to me, that's the key. Um, to learning how things are kind of put together. So let me do one more example, no comma, um, and I'll switch this sentence. So Harriet's boyfriend dumped her because she was late. Okay, no comma there. Now, the other thing that people ask me when I teach this is, um, is it wrong to start a sentence with the word because? No, actually, you can start a sentence with because. Um, in more formal situations, if you have sometimes an academic paper, you may not want to do that, but it's perfectly acceptable. The reason that a lot of teachers tell you not to do that is because what people will do is that they'll put a period in there and then they'll, they'll create a fragment, right? It's a dependent clause that's not connected to anything. Um, so you don't want to do that. But yeah, you can start one as long as you put the comma in the right spot. So those were our first three rules for comma use, separating items in a list of three or more. I'm sorry, four rules. Two, um, when you have two or more adjectives describing a noun, you separate those items. Three, you put a comma before the fanboy's conjunction when you're combining two sentences. So comma for, comma and, comma nor, comma ot, but, comma or, comma yet, comma so, every time. Um, and you use a comma after a dependent clause, but not before. So if the dependent clause comes first, put a comma in after it. And as you can see, my overall comment here is that commas are used to separate things to give us a little bit of a breath and sometimes with words they're used to join things correctly so remember that when you go to do some of the practice that commas are those brief pauses we're going to talk about three other rules for commas next time and then we'll look at authentic materials so i hope to see you then thanks